legs and stuff. So as always, get those sitting bones a little behind you and you can start in a cross-leg position, but we're creatures of habit. So switch your legs around because otherwise we tend to do the same side over and over and over. So let's just warm up the spine a little bit. So bring the ribs back, contract the abs a little bit, and round slightly forward looking down at the mat between your, in front of your leg. And just feel that back get a little bit of a stretch. And then start at the bottom of your spine and push the ribs out and the chest forward and the heart open as you look up with those shoulders and shoulder blades coming down. It's a nice little back bend. And just a few times through that, exhaling, rounding forward, and then inhaling and arching into a back bend, just gently, chest forward, heart open. Remember, don't crunch your neck too much. Shoulders and shoulder blades towards your waist and just feel that opening. Exhaling, rounding. And one more into the back bend. And then come back upright. Feel those ribs and let's just circle them around. So bring the ribs to the front, to the side, to the back, to the other side. And just see if you can keep your Shoulders above your hips while you're doing that. And then stop and go the other way with the ribs. So just moving that middle section around, a little bit of abs work for you today. And then again, after circling both ways, come on back to the center. Oh, let's switch the legs around just to get started and do a little side opening. So bringing the arms out, palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders. Let's clasp them just like we do standing up. Bring your arms next to your ears, stretch up and lean over to the side. You keep that hip you're leaning away from down. Make sure your shoulder isn't leaning forward, so pull it a little bit back. Feel the ribs opening. Keep the shoulders down, come back to the center and switch the other hand to the front. And again, arms by your ears, shoulders down, crown high, lean to the opposite side. And again, just a little rib opening there. Stretch out, keep breathing. Maximize or minimize, remember your practice. And then back upright and and then just take a moment. Oh, let's switch the legs again because we're going to be working the lower body. Just keep moving it around. And then hands at your sides, arms out, palms over your shoulders. Stretch, keep those shoulders down. Lengthen up and exhale, turn into the twist. Hand to the outside of your knee and the other hand right behind you on the floor. Stretch up through the spine. And then as you exhale, hips, ribs, shoulder, everything turns. So that back hip comes up a little bit, sitting up, sitting down off the floor. So your whole spine can twist as you go into that twist. Take a breath, exhale, deepen as much as you'd like. And then inhaling, lift up, arms to the ceiling, and release back into your seated position. Little spinal twist there. So just feel that energy starting to move. And one more time, switch your legs around and get ready to twist. Yeah, the other way to balance the body. So again, hands at your sides, arms out and up, stretch long, keep the shoulders down, lengthen the spine, exhale and twist. Hand to the outside of the knee, the other hand right behind you. Stretch from the sitting bones up, get everything stretched up and really good. Exhale and turn again into that twist. And remember, one of those hips can come up so that you can move no twisting too intensely through that sacrum lower back area. Take a breath, just maximizing your twist and then lengthening up, breathing in and exhale and release. 
And again, just take a moment, feeling all the circulation as you bring your legs up to the front and into staff position so we can get those hips nice and warmed up. So feet hip width apart-ish, sitting on slightly behind you, ribs in and up, spine stacked for support over your hips and crown reaching to the ceiling. Keep the shoulders down and then bring that one foot up to your opposite thigh and let the knee come down toward the floor. <clears throat> Take a moment, just breathing. You can put your hand on the knee, but don't really press. You don't want to stress the muscles. We want to let them relax and just add a little weight so that it's encouraged to go toward the floor. Take a few breaths there, just relaxing. And then when you're ready, bring that foot up and knee into your hands or pull your arms around and pull the leg in and move back and forth so this outside of your hip rotator gets a little bit warmed up. So we'll be using that part of your hip as we go. So just let it relax. You can lift your leg higher or closer when it starts feeling like it's a little bit easier or not, always personal practice. Just feel that hip joint letting it release any tightness. And then bring that leg back out to the front and notice the difference. Remember that inner observation is your yoga practice. And of course, put it to the other one. So sitting bones behind you, pulling that other foot up toward the thigh and again, letting the knee come out to the side. Oh yeah, and remember, you can always move that leg over if you need it a little bit more open for you today. Knee and toes up on that front leg, knee coming down just again. If you want a little extra weight to help that knee encourage toward the floor, you can do that, but don't press it down. Just relax. Keep the spine long and straight. Don't forget to breathe. And again, bringing the foot and knee in or the whole leg pulling in and work the hip rotator on that other hip outside. Take a few breaths, just keep relaxing. Lengthen up, bring the leg into whatever position is comfortable for you to move. Get it nice and warm. And then exhaling, bring that leg back out to the front. Take a moment, feeling again, a little bit more warmth there. And we're gonna come into child's pose. So a nice little hips towards your heels, hands, palms up and forehead coming down. Stretch for your body. <clears throat> Good stretch for that lower hip area as well. And then bringing your hands out in front, right in front of your shoulders, stretch them out, plant the palms down. Make sure your knees and heels are hip, hip width apart. <clears throat> and then pivot up onto your hands and knees just briefly. We're gonna tuck those toes under and then sink those hips back toward your heels and lift your knees. And we're gonna go into down dog. So hips straight up, heels toward the floor. Ears next to your arms, nice V-shaped position with your whole body. And then tuck in your chin, slightly bend your knees and walk your feet toward your hands and hang and ride dog. And then slowly arms hanging at the front, just wind your way up, shoulders up, back and down and coming into mountain pose. Take a moment, feel your spine a little bit more stimulated. Get grounded and centered into both feet evenly. Inhale, bring your arms out to the sides. Exhale, hands to your heart. Stretch the arms to the front, keep your shoulders down. Exhale, those hands behind and clasp. Lift your heart and pivot at your hips. Exhale, over. So just a little yoga mudra like our normal warm-up when we're standing. Tuck in your chin, move the neck around, chin around, get that whole release through that area. And with the knees bent, ribs lifted, sitting bones down, just wind your spine back all the way up to standing, heart high, 
hands toward the floor, stretch the head back, and then inhale to the top, release to mountain pose. Feel the circulation. And one more time, reach it out, keep the shoulders down, hands to your chest, stretch to the front, and clasp your hands the opposite way, of course, behind you as you press toward the floor and lift your heart and pivot one more time over and relax. Sitting bones up, head down again, just release any tension anywhere. And on an inhalation, wind your way back slowly to the top and another back bend just to give that spine a nice opening through the chest. Inhale up and release back to now. Hands to your heart. And following your hands up, look at them toward the ceiling. A little back bend if you like, looking at your thumbs as you pull them slightly behind you and exhale all the way over into ragdoll. Feel those hips getting a little bit more energy. We'll lift the sitting bones, slide the hands up under your knees, stretch and straighten, and exhale back to back. Palms together, inhaling, and to your heart, and into mountain pose. And one more hip warm up. We'll do our little pelvic tilt. So remember, angle the toes out slightly, bend the knees toward the toes, not beyond, hands above your knees, and push the chest forward and the sitting bones back, coming into your back bend. Remember, no pressure on those knees, just let them be a little bit of a guide. Exhale, ribs back, looking down. Tuck those sitting bones down and forward so we're getting that pelvis really moving. And again, inhale, back bending, getting that pelvis out and back, chest forward, shoulder blades down. And again, ribs in, rounding, a little contraction in the abs as well as you bring that whole back of your body into that forward bend. And just a couple times to make sure that those hips are still getting really nicely lubricated, getting ready for our workout today. And then when you're forward, just pause and return to mountain pose. And again, just feel those hips. And we're gonna start at the end of the mat. And hands to your heart. Everything in mountain pose otherwise, and looking at your hands, just stretch your neck. Inhale, bring the hands up toward the ceiling. And again, if you love those back bends, you can bring the thumbs back and lift your heart. Exhale, follow your hands. Remember, process, not shooting for the destination. And drop into right down. Hands up on your shins and stretch and straighten. And then as you exhale, bend your knees, hands to the floor under your shoulders, fingertips or palms down, or you can bring blocks or books, remember, and raise the floor if you need to. And then we're going to step the right foot way back to a lunge position. So just push back through the heel, knee above your ankle on that front leg, making sure the knee is angled toward the second toe and not falling in across the big toe or out toward the little toe. Press back through the heel, let that hip sink. We're gonna bring the knee down to the floor. Remember, above the knee, not on the kneecap, or give yourself a little padding. And just let this hip flexor stretch because we're gonna use that a little bit. So sink toward the floor, just relax it down. And then tuck the toes back under, lift the knee, press the heel back. Keep the hip low and back into that lunge position. And then press forward, relax and ragdoll. Feel the release through that hip. Palms together, inhaling. And again, hands to your heart and then all the way up toward the ceiling. And of course, we're gonna balance the body and do the other side. So again, keeping your shoulders and shoulder blades down as you're looking up at your thumbs. 
One more back bend if you love them. And again, exhaling. Just process those hands towards your heart, pivoting at your hips, exhaling into Randall. Hands under your knees for that halfway up stretch. And then again, bending your knees as much as you need to for those hands to come down. Step that left leg back and do your lunge. Check your alignment, make sure you're not working that knee in or out. And bring the knee behind you to the floor for that extra stretch on this hip flexor on with the left leg. So again, just sink that hip toward the floor, relaxing it, giving it a nice little gentle stretch. And then tucking your toes under again, press all the way from the heel out through the crown. And step forward, another nice ragdoll, releasing that hip. And inhale and bring your hands up, extending toward the ceiling. And again, we're going to do the same thing with the hips, just warming them up a little bit more. So once again, hard hug. Give yourself a nice back bend if you love back bends. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Exhaling, coming back down. And once more into it. Hands on your shins for that halfway up stretch. So get everything straight, knees, elbows, and spine. Stretch it out. Exhale, hands to the floor next to your toes. And once more, the right foot back for your lunge position. Check it out. Make sure everything is getting nice and straight. Keep the knee up and the hip down. And then we're going to bring the knee down to the floor again and slide the toes back and sink through that hip flexor for a nice little stretch. Now, if that's already enough stretch for you, stay there. If you want a little bit more, you can bring your hands up to that front knee. Give yourself a little more height through the whole spine and then sink the hip down toward the floor. So both hips evenly sinking down, giving a nice stretch to that front of the thigh. Take a breath, lift your heart and look up if you want a little bit more. Shoulder blades toward your wrist. And then looking forward and bringing your hands back next to your foot. Tuck the toes under again, lifting the knee but not the hip, getting that good straight line from your heel through your crown. And then once more, push forward, Relax in ragdoll, let those hips release. And slowly, once more, hands to your heart and extending up. And again, looking at your hands as you're in that upright position or, and again, a nice back bend. Exhale, we're pivoting down once more. Hands slowly processing to your heart and then to the floor. Again, feel the release in your hips as you're in that forward bend. Slide the hands up and get that halfway up stretch, straightening everything. And bending your knees, hands right next to your feet. Left foot goes back for your lunge. Check your alignment. Make sure that knee isn't getting overworked. Spread your toes. You're on the base of the toes behind you, remember, not the toes themselves, so don't overwork the toes. Relax, push back through the heel, shoulder blades down towards your wrist. And then bringing your knee down, remember a little bit above it or padding under it if you need to. Get that release through the hip flexor on that left leg. Staying there, or again, a little bit higher, Coming with the hands on your knee, letting that hip go down as the crown is up toward the ceiling. Remember, shoulder, shoulder blades always toward your wrist. Heart nicely open. Keep breathing. Just feel the stretch and let it relax. And then again, hands coming down, toes tucking under and lifting the knee. Remember a nice straight stretch through that lunge. And then push forward and relax again. And Inhale and again, hands to your heart, 
continuing up toward the ceiling. Just gazing up at your hands, feeling the back bend if you want. And again, exhaling, coming back down and into ragdoll. Hands up on your shins, stretching and straightening. Lengthen through the back of the neck always when you do that stretch. Bend your knees again, hands to the floor. And we're going to step back into lunge position one more time. And then bringing the knee down to the floor, just like we did before, and flattening those toes. We're going to go into pigeon pose. So this is going to work that hip rotator more along with the stretch on this hip flexor. So plant your hands and slide that foot over to the side with this knee just off the edge of the mat. And then you can pull the heel forward as much as perpendicular with that shin to your body or not. You can have that heel in closer to your hip bone if that works better for you. Keep sliding the back leg back for that hip flexor stretch. And notice that this hip rotator on the this left leg is getting more intense, especially if you bring that heel forward. But remember, always slide that knee off to the left as you're doing that. And then just chest forward and crown high, shoulder blades down. Get a good stretch on everything or if you want a little bit of a release, slide your hands forward and bring your forearms down with your elbows under your shoulders. And that'll give you a little bit less intensity, but effectively work it the same way. So again, just breathe. Keep those hips as even as you can, sinking toward the floor. And the chest and shoulders also as even toward the floor as you can. Take a breath. Just in. Crown a little bit up. No crunching on the neck, though. Just keep stretching. So if you're down, you can stay there a few more breaths. If you're up and you want a little bit more intensity, you can actually bring your chest forward and look up and arch into a little bit more of a back bend. And that will intensify all that hip work even more, only if you want to do it. So take a moment and breathe. Let things relax because remember that's when they go more effectively into the position. And if your arms are down on the floor, go ahead and slide those hands back under your shoulders. If you're arched up, look again toward the front. And we're going to, once again, tuck those toes under, press into your hand and bring that foot back into your lunge position and step the foot forward. And relax and ride down. And once again, hands to your heart and all the way up toward the ceiling. And a nice little stretch to the whole front of your body. And go ahead and exhale, hands to your heart into mountain pose as we get ready to do that final side. So, yeah, we're going to do one more exactly sort of what we did just a moment ago. So once again, hands to your heart, mountain pose at the end of your mat. Inhaling, hands toward the ceiling, looking up, bring them back into the back bend for those of you who love it. Exhale, hands to your heart, follow all the way into ragdoll. And take a nice breath there, stretching. Hands up under your knees into that halfway up stretch, everything nice and straight, including the back of your neck. Bend your knees, hands to the floor, left leg back to lunge position. And again, find your place, make sure everything's lined up correctly, and bring your knee down behind you. Slide those toes back, just relaxing. And when you're ready, we're going to go into pitching. So again, slide the foot to the side, bring that knee way over to the right side this time and let that left leg slide back behind you. You can keep this heel near your hip, or if you like a little more intensity in the hip rotator, slide that foot further forward, as much as parallel to the end of your mat. So go ahead, staying there, just sinking those hips toward the floor, letting everything maximize into the stretch. 
Or for those of you who want a little bit release, slide your hands forward, elbows under your shoulders, hands flat on the floor. So not a lot of pressure in the hands, just letting those elbows align under your shoulders. Push the chest forward and up, and sink the hips evenly down for the floor. And those of you loving it in your pigeon pose without going to the floor, keep those hands under your shoulders, chest forward and up, and head a little bit back. So again, keep stretching the back of your neck, whichever position you're in, and keeping that chest going forward and up as those hips sink toward the floor as much or as little as you'd like. Take a breath, just exhale and relax. Hips sinking down. And if your arms are on the floor, slide them back. If you're in the back bend on the way up, you can look forward. And again, we're gonna press the hands into the floor, tuck the toes behind you under, lift, bring that knee back up, get it back up between your hands. And again, you're in lunge position first, and then you're pushing into ragdoll. Take a moment and breathe. And inhale, hands to your heart and into mountain pose. Take a moment there, feeling this hip area, both the outsides of the hips and that hip flexor in the front, all nice and open and warmed up and stretched. And then hands to your heart, inhaling, hands toward the ceiling. Another back bend for those of you who love back bends. Exhaling and again, coming all the way to the floor into our Chinese pose. As you get there, notice these hips are relaxing and releasing a little bit after all our work today. Take a moment, just breathe. And then inhaling and sitting up. Let's bring those legs out in front. And into staff pose. Feet hip width apart, core activated, spine nice and straight. Then we're just going to roll it all the way onto the floor. As you get all the way back down, just a moment of recline integration, getting ready for our final twist. Bring your arms out, palms up or down, sitting bones towards your heels, back pressing down, heels coming in next to your sitting bones, knees straight up. Press your spine all the way down as you lift your feet up off the floor. Getting ready for our twist. So knees right above your hips and roll the knees over to the side. Turn your head to the opposite side and relax into your twist. Take a few breaths. Just allow your hips to release and your spine to get a good twist for the whole length of your spine. So remember you want to really sitting bones and crown reach away as you move into your twist. So those bones have room to move with your twist. You can bring your knees toward your elbow for a little lower back stretch since we've been working those hips so much today, if you like. And then hips back toward your, or heels back toward your hips. And a roll onto your back so that we can twist the other way. And again, if you need to bring the feet to the floor to straighten it out, you can do that. And of course, we're going to twist to the other side. So knees coming over, head turning behind you. And again, relax there for a few breaths, just allowing your twist to happen, not forcing anything. And of course, those of you who want that little extra stretch through the hip area after all our low back work and twist, bring the knees toward the elbow. Take a breath, shoulders and shoulder blades down, head turning, whole spine into your twist. And then once more, heels toward your hips, rolling onto your back, bring your feet down toward the floor, Sliding them out, coming into corpse position for our final relaxation. 
So as always, just breathe deep, shoulders sinking down, hands, palms up, letting your whole hip area, pelvis just soften and sink. Lots of work there today. So just allow all that area to release any tension or tightness. Soften your whole body, let your belly release. Shoulders relax down. Move your head around, make sure your neck isn't tense or tight. Soften your jaw. And just focus inward, letting your spine release, your hips relax, your whole body grow heavy and sink into the surface beneath you. you let the earth support your body and just let everything relax. And as your body releases into the earth embrace, just allow your mind to release thoughts of your body completely. And know that as you do, other thoughts will come to your mind. It's always the job of your mind to keep producing thoughts. It's your choice what you pay attention to. And at this moment, there is no thought that needs your attention. Just let them all go unneeded, unnoticed. Let's forget the past. Don't worry about the future. Just let those thoughts flow in and out. No need to pay attention to their content. Just let them go completely. And as you breathe more deeply and your body sinks deep into that earth embrace, just let your mind float freely, releasing any thoughts. And just allow your awareness to release both your body and your mind, focusing inward. Finding that peace deep within. Fill your mind with the peace. Fill your body with the peace. And just allow the peace to fill you completely. Being peace. And of course, if you can keep relaxing today even longer, take as much time to relax as you need and want. It's time to get ready for the rest of your day. Just begin drawing energy and awareness back to the breath, to the moment, to your body. And as you breathe more deeply, just begin moving your body gently, however feels good for you. And when you're ready, get a good stretch going. And for your final yoga hug of appreciation, sitting bones toward your heels, heels up near your hips, and then knees drawn up toward your heart. Wrap your arms around, whoever feels good for that appreciative yoga hug today. Let your body know you appreciate its yoga work and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready to release that, head and feet to the floor, rolling over to the side, and sitting back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead for the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me.